Okay, and welcome to week six of this wonderful, unusual semester. And once again, I know that some of you are in a better position than others to continue your shows, uh, but we really need to move this ahead. And so we're going to bring in a topic that's usually reserved until a bit later, because I think it can be easily incorporated at this time. And that is the idea of sponsorship. And so basically what I'm going to ask you to think about doing is getting somebody to sponsor your show. Now you may wonder how in the world am I going to do that? Well, we're going to talk about what sponsorship is and how it works, and then we're going to tell you exactly how you can do that. Okay, so sponsorship and radio. How does radio pay? How do you get radio to pay for itself? Because it kind of has to, and the reason why we're going through it in this kind of context is because you may not actually have thought of it. I mean, the fact of the matter is when you buy a book from a bookstore, you're actually paying for that book. And so the author will get paid based on how many of those books are sold. And the publisher who prints the books, you know, they get the money directly. And so there's a clear money chain going on there. And the same thing if you go to a, a movie theater, which probably some of you haven't done in a while and may never do again the way things are going. You walk in there, you buy a ticket, and you go in and see the, the movie. And so the ticket sales are what actually pays for the movie. Now, on the other hand, you turn on your radio, it's quite possible that you've never paid anybody anything except for the radio itself. And the same thing is true of television. Uh, not so much today, but it used to be. And so the question is, where does the money come from to make all of this happen? So even today, few people pay for radio. Now, radio is a passive and free service, but that doesn't mean that there aren't some exceptions. Uh, but we generally expect radio to be there. In fact, some of you even think of it as kind of a right. You have a right to radio. This programming uh, that we take for granted, that we listen to all the time. Uh, if you were asked to pay for it, you may actually get angry. It's like, why should I pay for this? This is my right. And uh, in some ways, it seems that way. And so pay services exist, and it's probably worth exploring that for a second. Uh, the, um, the, the best example of this would be XM Radio. Now, XM Radio... Uh, pays for itself or is paid for based on subscription. It's, uh, it's satellite based, meaning that when you buy an XM system, you're actually getting radio from a satellite and it knows you're listening. And so whereas regular radio, regular terrestrial radio sends out a signal out to all directions at once and they have no idea who's listening until they do a ratings uh, service, you know, that gives them some idea. Whereas XM radio, they not, not only do they know you're listening, they can stop you from listening. And so if you don't pay them your $9.99 a month or whatever it is, you turn on the XM system and it doesn't do anything. And so uh, that's important to understand. How did XM manage to get a foothold? Well, they, they did this by having them installed in new cars. And so these days, if you buy a car, you have access to XM whether you use it or not. Uh, and to be fair, that's where most people listen to radio. Most people don't necessarily power around and uh, sort of gather around the radio like they did back in the 1930s, uh, but they will have it playing in their car when they drive, and maybe they'll have it playing in the office. You don't pay much attention to it, which is why it's pretty hard to get people to pay for it. Okay, so you're used to buying the radio, not the content. The content is free, which takes us to the idea of um, even paid services do establish uh, advertising as a revenue. Now, let me pause on that one and say that I'm actually old enough to remember when cable television ap appeared. And I remember the first thing that the people in cable television said was, you don't get advertising. Basically, you buy the subscription to the cable service. You don't have to worry about ads. We give you all the content without those annoying ads. Well, that didn't last long. I can attest to this. It did not last long at all. Maybe... Uh, in some cases, probably less than a year. It was only a very short amount of time before ads suddenly became a regular part of that on top of the subscription services. And so uh, advertising will always be with us, so we might as well recognize it. So, and the reason why this is the case is because radio does have costs. And so, and you know, let's be fair, let's break this down for a minute. When you're doing your show, I seriously doubt you're incurring much of a cost if you're talking into a microphone, uh, which you can get for a very small cost, you only have to buy it once, you're talking into a computer, really. 
which you may already own, which you may already use for something else uh, or whatever. There's very little cost there. But terrestrial radio is a lot more expensive because you have to pay for your FCC license, which we don't have to pay for yet. And I say yet because I don't trust those guys. Uh, we also have to hire personnel. As we talked about before, a radio uh, broadcast requires more than just the host. The person talking on the radio is only a small part of the team. You also have your producing staff, uh, you have your administrators, you have your sales staff, and even the technician that works outside on the, on the transmitter. All those people have to make a living. And so the, uh, the end result is you've got a bill that you've got to pay. And also overhead maintenance. And so if you look at the radio facility we have at Methodist University, it does have to be maintained. You know, it does, uh, it is part of the building. And so uh, it's got to be heated and cooled and stuff like that. And so that all costs money as well. So radio isn't free. And so sponsorship existed from the beginning because there is a need that radio can fill that would be hard to do so otherwise. So sponsors pay for a specific show content or general content. So meaning that, uh, let's say you have a restaurant. You know, restaurants are easy to understand. They, they want to get people into the restaurant. And so let's say it's a local restaurant like Scrub Oaks, for example, that's, uh, that's near the college uh, or a pizza shop or something. And so they want people to go to their restaurant. And so they might, uh, talk to MU Radio and say, look, you, know, you, got, you have an audience here. We would like to invite members of your audience to come eat at our restaurant. And so in exchange for that, we will give you $4,000, hypothetically, because that's actually possible. Uh, and so that might be one way of establishing sponsorship. And so they may be talking to you know, somebody like the radio director, you know, someone like the communication department, or the school administration, hypothetically, if we we're going to go that route. And so somebody somewhere would sign a deal that would make that happen. Now, that may not be the best way to do it, believe it or not, at least from your perspective. So if, on the other hand, it could be that you have a favorite restaurant you go to, and you go in there uh, representing your show, not MU Radio as a whole, and say, look, I've got, I've got an audience you know, of 50 people that listen to me regularly, and so I want to give them the ability uh, to, um, to hear, you know, I, I, want, I want you to basically have access to this audience in exchange for something. And usually what happens is the, the sponsor's products get mentioned and somehow the, uh, the, the sponsor gives something to the school or gives something to your program. Now let's talk about that relationship, how that would work out. The sponsor will provide something the station needs or something the show needs. Let's, let's open it up a little bit. Now, it's, uh, it, traditionally, it's money, but that's, uh, that's not necessarily going to be an option of, you know, going right off the gate because uh, let, let's, let's picture this scenario. Let's say you go over to Scrub Oaks and say, I've got an audience of, say, 50 listeners, and uh, I want to basically bring you in as a sponsor. How much are you willing to pay for those 50 listeners? Of which, let's be fair, maybe two of them, two or three of them are going to come in. And so, therefore, that doesn't represent a huge amount of revenue for the restaurant. And so they may not necessarily be interested in paying money for this, but they may allow you to put up a poster on their window advertising your show so that they can listen to it, you know, with the QR code so you can, you can get right into the show. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a perfectly legitimate idea. And the sponsor can provide other in-kind services as well. So, for example, a restaurant might offer discounts for giveaways and things like that. And so, if you're a regular listener of the show, um, we're going to give you a gift certificate to Scrub Oaks or some other restaurant. And they may have other promotions on site. It could be that you'll do a live show from the restaurant. Hypothetically, that could happen. If you can work that out, more power to you. Great. And so, the radio host will provide advertising for the sponsor. And that can take many different forms. <laughs> it can take many different forms. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's what, uh, what types of forms that can take. I uh, now a word from our sponsor. Remember that old saying? I don't think anyone says that anymore. Okay, so the, uh, the sweeper, uh, which uh, is sometimes, well, we call it a sweep sometimes. It's, it's a prepared script read by the host. And so 
Uh, it could be that you run into this in talk shows where you'll hear your favorite talk show host talking and then suddenly uh, he starts talking about this particular product uh, and you can hear, usually you can hear a change in the tone. It's like there's a difference between someone talking to you and somebody reading something aloud. Usually you get that, that's okay, we're doing a sweep now. And that can go on for anywhere from 20 seconds to a minute, maybe a little more than that, depending on, on the sweep. Usually you can tell because you've heard it before, you've heard those words before. And it can also be uh, either read verbatim, it could be they're actually literally reading it on the air, or it could be it's prepared ahead of time and, and pre-recorded. And so it could be that they basically hit a button on their soundboard and it starts playing their voice doing the sweeper, then they kill the microphone and they know they've got a minute to do something. Or it could be that it's, it's scheduled to go from there and then the producer will put something else on and then they'll have three minutes to do something and they'll be, come back and go live. And so those are possibility. And the sweeper could also just be a genuine casual mention of the product and so maybe during, uh, during a, a sports talk, for example, someone might say, yeah, you know what I really like? I really like scrub oaks. You know, their dinner platter is really good, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And so then the person they're talking to say, yeah, I know, I've, I've had that too. That's really good. It could be they had it last week as part of the uh, testimonial. And so that's how that can work. You can also get the canned commercial, which basically either the producer makes it or the sponsor provides it, could be a 30 second blurb, uh, whatever it is that has nothing to do with the show. And so it's usually narrated by somebody you've never heard in any other context, and they're talking about the product. And uh, if they provide this for you, it's easy enough to run into the soundboard, so you can just hit the button and there it goes. Uh, or you can produce it yourself, uh, which we've already demonstrated some of that. We're gonna have to go in more detail on that. Okay, and this has to be documented in the logs, and that's really kind of critical because the, um, the sponsor isn't necessarily going to be listening to the show every single time. So the sponsor, they're, you know, they're in a different business. They're not necessarily in the radio business. They may listen to the show. They may not even like the show, to be fair, uh, but they do want that sponsorship. And so uh, they could be expected to record the show and to verify that the, uh, the sweep has been put in place. And so to do that, you must document where this took place in the log. Also, uh, so if the FCC were to audit you, assuming the FCC does audit you, uh, they would be able to find out if in fact your log was accurate. And if it isn't, you could get fined or it could be considered a crime depending on what's going on. Okay, now how do you go about finding a sponsor? Well, you know, that's not necessarily going to be an easy job, but it's what you got to do. Uh, you should somehow match this to your show, if, you, uh, if at all possible, because, well, for example, if you're doing a cooking show or a music show, let's say you're doing a cooking show, maybe you could have that sponsored by your local Williams-Sonoma, uh, if they're still in business, or, or some other place. Maybe a local shop would be better. And so if they're selling uh, the tools of the trade, you know, you can mention them and they can have their little, uh, little shout out to you in the store. And that's a possibility. There's no reason why you can't do that. Uh, or if it's a sports uh, announcer, you can do like a, like a sports bar or something like that. Music show could have a music provider of some kind. And so those are possible things. Also, uh, let's say that it doesn't necessarily have to be about money. Uh, you could have a fraternity or a sorority sponsor you in which they would include your show logo on their website or in their, in their uh, uh, frater fraternity house or whatever, if they still have those things. And so that's how that would work. And the producer and the talent have to make some kind of a contact. You actually have to go and talk to these people because you have to have an agreement and that agreement has to be uh, has to be documented. What should the sponsor do? You know, are they going to have are they, are they're going to have like a little tray with your business cards there? Are they going to show a poster on their site? You know, what is it going to be that they're going to do that might drive traffic to your show? And what should you, the host do? You know, are you going to mention them? Are you going to have a specific sweep? So if so, that has to be agreed on. And one thing I'll say at this point 
None of this means anything if your show is not on regularly. You know, the whole purpose of getting this started in the first few weeks of the school, uh, really should have been the first couple of weeks, was to have your show regular enough that you could actually have something to offer the sponsor. And so, uh, one thing I can guarantee you is if your show doesn't air regularly, you can't get a sponsor. Who would want to sponsor a show that shows up maybe once a month at sporadic times? So they want to sponsor a show that they know for a fact is going to arrive at that particular time slot every day. And that's what we've uh, provided for you. We provided a means of doing that. And so you have to provide that fresh content and you have to provide that incentive for sponsorship. And this could also include a logo on your website, a logo on their website. Now, during our, uh, one of our latest uh, lab sessions, we talked about how to update your website. And that's always a good thing. You can include the logo of the business that you're sponsoring as part of that update. Because if you're sponsored by them, that's a relationship. They're on your team. And so therefore, if somebody goes to your site, they see the logo of the, um, the sponsor, and they, and especially if it's well chosen, uh, they may uh, they may be inspired to frequent that business as well. That's how that works. And again, documentation is necessary to make sure that all of these things are done. If you say you're going to do something, you better do it. And you also have to make sure that it's in writing somewhere. The the expression "let's see it in writing" that's very important. And so really, this is what I'm asking you to think about. And so, yes, I'm asking you to, um, to basically make a phone call, to walk down the street, to do some thinking. Who do you think would be interested in sponsoring your show and why? What can you offer them? What can they offer you? Document it and send me a copy of that agreement and then start making this happen. Start mentioning that sponsor each time. And uh, uh, what, a couple of things I want to warn you about. First of all, uh, the sponsor actually has to know that they're uh, the sponsor. Don't pretend that you can say, I'm sponsored by General Motors. Well, General Motors probably doesn't know you. I'm sorry. That's just not going to happen. Uh, but you may, there may be a local um, company uh, that could, in fact, offer you something. You know, without getting into trouble with upper management, they could put a, a little poster up in the window or something like that. If that's the case, you know, document that that's happening. Uh, the, the, the idea is, though, that you don't want to say, oh, I think I want to be sponsored by X. I'll just put that on my website and I'll talk about them later. No, you actually have to have an agreement. You have to have somebody's name that can be contacted that says, yeah, we agree to do that. Now, don't worry. I don't necessarily want to contact these people and, and check up on you. I just want to see some kind of a signature, you know, something that says they have agreed to do this. Or if for some reason, because uh, there's, there's bureaucratic red tape, if they don't want to go that far, you know, at least come up with something, you know, some sort of evidence you know, that, they are, that they're doing this for you, like a picture of your poster up in their window or something like that, and that should be sufficient. So that is what I want you to work on for this week.